Tonight, Dropbox doubles down on photos, HP pays bribery fines, Facebook's forcing its messenger app on users, and big changes afoot on the Apple team. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 62 for Wednesday, April 9th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,400 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN and number two. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Dropbox had some big announcements at a press event this morning in San Francisco. The first is Project Harmony, a set of new editing documents in Microsoft Office applications for them, rather, that will let Dropbox users see when others are viewing and editing shared documents and will also be launched to users later this year. The company also announced Carousel, a new app to store and manage your photos and videos via technology from photo service Snapjoy that Dropbox acquired back in December of 2012. Carousel shows only photos already stored in Dropbox and the ones on your camera roll, but the company says the app is one place for all your memories which suggests other services will be added in the future. Dropbox also announced that it now has 275 million users, up from 200 million back in November of 2013. Of those users who might use Dropbox at work, the company has now announced Dropbox for Business, which will connect personal Dropbox folders to Dropbox for Business folders on all synced devices. Hewlett Packard has agreed to pay a $108 million fine over allegations that its subsidiaries bribed officials in Poland, Russia, and Mexico to win business contracts. The U.S. Justice Department explained in a statement today that the subsidiaries created slush funds for bribe payments, then set up shell companies and bank accounts to launder the money, then used anonymous email accounts and prepaid mobile telephones to arrange covert meetings to hand over cash. But that the investigation had had HP's extensive cooperation, which included an internal investigation. Federal officials said the bribes totaled more than $2 million in Russia, more than $1 million in Mexico, and more than 600000 in Poland. Facebook announced today that it's rolling out a new design for ads that it places on the right of the news feed. The rollout will start later this month with a full switch by the end of the year. The company says the ads will be larger, just slightly smaller than the ads that show up in the news feed itself, but that users will see fewer of them. This change will be desktop only since the right-hand column doesn't actually appear on mobile, although mobile now accounts for the majority of Facebook's ad revenue. In other Facebook changes, the company is stripping out chat functionality in its main apps that will force users to chat in Facebook Messenger, its standalone app. Users who don't already have Messenger installed on iOS or Android will have to download to keep chatting via the service. Notifications about the change have started for some European users today, and eventually all Facebook users will get migrated to the new protocol. The only other way to circumvent this is to either have a low-end Android phone that can't even run Messenger, or use Facebook's mobile website, or use Facebook's news app paper. So you actually have a few choices. Coming up, thinking of getting yourself a farming drone? We'll tell you where you should not move. And after the break, 9 to 5 Max, Mark Gurman joins us to explain some big changes afoot at Apple. But first, let's thank lynda.com for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. With lynda.com's easy-to-follow video tutorials, you can learn at your own pace, on your own terms, from industry experts. With a subscription, members get unlimited access to thousands of online video courses, covering a wide range of technology skills, creative techniques. If you want to improve your photography or software skills, Maybe you want to know about web design. Maybe you've always wanted to code. It's time to learn some programming. At lynda.com, you can do all of that. Top quality videos, hundreds of different subjects. Watch from your computer, your tablet, your mobile device. And the instructors are all accomplished professionals. They're experts, they're passionate, and each course is structured so you can go from start to finish or just jump around. It's only $25 per month for access to the entire lynda.com course library. Or for $37.50 per month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which also includes exercise files. Try lynda.com right now with a free seven-day trial a whole week. Visit lynda.com slash tn2 and access the entire library, over 2,400 courses for free. 
for seven days. L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2. Joining us now is Mark Gurman, senior editor at 9to5Mac. Hello, Mark. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being here. So you wrote an article today uh, that has been confirmed uh, by Apple that uh, Apple Human Interface Vice President Greg Christie is retiring. He's been at the company 20 or so years, but there may right. be more to the story. Right. So uh, what I reported this morning is that Greg Christie, uh, who you mentioned, ran Apple's human interface team. And human interface is basically what the software on your iOS devices like iPhones and iPads and your Macs looks like. So like the icons, how it works, the different applications, basically what you see when you're using the products. So his role was critical and it was a really big deal. Um, and he's been in the news the last couple of weeks because Apple gave him uh, to the Wall Street Journal NPR for interviews ahead of the Samsung Apple trial that's going on in California right now. Uh, Christie was very critical working with Steve Jobs and Scott Forstall on the first iPhone's interface. So he's leaving the company uh, later this year, and his upcoming retirement from Apple was announced to employees uh, within the last few weeks. So it's a notable departure. And uh, what we've heard from sources is that the departure was not as clean as Apple's making it sound. Uh, in their PR statement from within the last couple hours. Uh, we've heard that there was a fallout with Jonathan Ive, who is Apple's senior vice president of design. And Jonathan Ive took some leadership and directional roles with, on Apple's human interface, their software team, and worked closely with Greg Christie since late 2012 for this big iOS 7 redesign that we've been using for, um, for almost the last year or so. Um, and basically, they had a falling out in terms of direction of design. And what ended up happening was that I basically circumvented Christie's control over interface and basically just worked directly uh, with Christie's designers on iOS 7. And now we're also hearing that I will have influence over the new Mac operating system. So as I understand so, it, all the software designers will now work directly under... Uh, Johnny Ive with the rest right. of his industrial design team, Craig right. Federighi's engineering group. How does how does it structure differently? Right. So before this change, um, Jonathan Ive ran his industrial design team, which is how the hardware looks and feels, and it's been this way for many years. Craig Federighi, who runs software engineering, was the senior vice president in charge of this human interface design. So. Greg Christie previously reported to Craig Federighi, and all Greg Christie's designers working on the software reported to him. So uh, Christie was under Federighi. Now, all of Christie's designers are under Jonathan Ive, reporting to Ive directly. So Ive, previously over the last year and a half or so, gave leadership and direction and influence to Federighi and Christie's design team. But now that team is literally right with Ive alongside the hardware designers. So the silos that previously existed were basically unlocked over the last year and a half, but now it's just one design team covering both hardware and software, which is a major change for Apple and how Apple's worked for the last several decades. Obviously, when iOS 7 was introduced, we were all introduced to the new flat design. Things looked different, they acted different, and everybody said, well, this is Jonathan Ive's stamp on the future of iOS. However, iOS 7 felt rushed to many in a variety of ways. How much do you think that this change behind the scenes is going to affect what we'll hear about at WWDC and iOS 8? Uh, I don't think there's going to be much of an effect for iOS 8. Uh, what I've reported previously is that iOS 8 is basically going to look the same as iOS 7. Uh, I think we talked about it on the show before, say for the new health book features, iTunes, radio functionality. So I think the bigger change that we'll see more imminently is with OS 10, 10.10, which would be the next version of the Mac operating system that runs on iMacs, MacBook Pros, etc. I think this change is a bigger deal looking forward. I think with the iPhone 5C, we got really a nice peek into what Johnny Ive thinks is the future of Apple, the hardware and software having the lines blurred between those two components immensely. You can, like, they talk about how the colors are throughout the phone. And that's really done because of the mix between hardware and software. And I think that this move is going to make that even stronger for the next decades to come. So, If Greg Christie doesn't retire, although Apple is saying that that's what he's going to do, having a ton of Apple patents in his name, slide to unlock is one of the hundreds that he, he, he's been involved with. And, and obviously, as you mentioned, Apple's patent infringement uh, suit against Samsung continues. Does this make things problematic if he wants to work somewhere else? For Apple, sure. I mean, if you look at what Greg Christie has done, if you look at the iPhone, it's the most popular and successful gadget and 
product of my generation and certainly many people's generations. And that's mostly because of Greg Christie's interface, the way people interact with the iPhone, the iPad as well, the Mac too. So I think if Christie were to go to a competitor, that would be a significant blow to Apple. I don't know if that's his plan. Um, Christie has worked in the industry for a few decades. I mean, he's worked at Apple long enough to have worked on the Newton in the time between Steve Jobs being ousted and Steve Jobs coming back in 1997. So he's been, he's been around for a while. So I don't know if he'll be going to a competitor. It might be time for him to just retire in general. I mean, you can see other Apple executives are trying over the last few years. Bob Mansfield, Peter Oppenheimer, and there's uh, Rita Lane in operations. There's a few more. So it seems to be a pattern in the last couple of years of some notable people retiring. Yeah, well, Jonathan Ive has more power than ever, so I'm sure. <laughs> Which is a good thing, you know. It yeah, could be a good thing. It's worked out. If you like his design style, certainly. Mark Gurman, Senior Editor at 9to5Mac, thanks so much for being with us today. Tell thanks, folks uh, where here. they can read more of your many scoops online. Sure. Uh, you can read me at 9to5Mac.com, and you can follow me on Twitter at Mark Gurman. You can see in my uh, lower third over there. Thanks so much, Mark. Thanks. Take care. You too. All right. Finally, Spain's state agency for aerial security, also known as the AESA, has banned all civilian drone use across the entire country for any commercial purpose. Those purposes include photogrammetry, intelligent agriculture, any type of visual reporting, the inspection of high tension or rail railway lines, border surveillance, detection of forest fires, and reconnaissance of places affected by natural disasters in order to direct adequate aid. Spain's El Confidencial reports that the new ruling by the AESA would make two multi-million uh, euro projects under development already in Spain useless, the 4.5 million euro Atlas Experimental Flight Center in Geron and a $40 million aerodrome project in Duana National Park that wants to operate drones weighing up to 650 kilograms. The agency still does allow model aircraft that is used exclusively for leisure and sport. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news version of the news, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.